By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing with a mono blue pink deck against a white green tempo deck with a splash of red. And as you can see, we've already started. My opponent put a Lanor Elves on the battlefield. Turn one, I guess I started since there's already an island there for me. And now I'm playing a Library of Alexandria. So that's good news. Now all I have to do is get to seven cards to start drawing and get some card advantage going. And what can Thijs do against this? And he's playing, no, not an Ice Storm, it's a Jalen Tome. That's the small book, book from Antiquities, and he can activate it for two mana, then draw a card and discard a card. So I'm activating my library for the first time. So that's my first card drawn with the library. Playing a Mace of If, so perhaps I'm having some uh, mana issues here. Because this is a strange choice. Playing a mono blue deck, I would much rather play my second blue mana to at least have the threat of a counterspell. And he draws a card, discards a card. The Jalen Tome is maybe a little bit underplayed. It's a great way to quickly go uh, through your deck, especially at the start of the game. It's just for two mana. And it's a way to get the spells you want. And I'm playing a stone here. So that gives me an extra mana, but my blue mana are tapped, so I cannot counter right now. And that's ties his fifth mana. What can he do with this tempo deck? He's playing a Sarah Angel, and luckily I have a Maze of If, or else I would be in serious trouble. Playing with Mono Blue, hardly having any removal. Don't have access to Lightning Bolt, Swords to Plows, Here's Terrors, that kind of stuff. Playing a Mono Blue deck, you have to send the Angel back, or Maze it, or counter spells. And I'm playing another Felwer Stone. Again, it means that I cannot play Counterspell now, because I only have access to one blue mana. And Thais has a lot of different mana symbols there, but not blue. Choosing to tap everything, playing a Prodigal Sorcerer. So my first Timmy is on the field. What I want to do with this mono blue build is basically get Timmy's on the field, clone the Timmy's, and kill everything that my opponent has. So it's, it's pretty basic. And there Thais goes. He draws with his Tome. Discards a Taiga. Doesn't need any land. At the moment, plays another Savannah. And he just needs a second big threat. So another angel or another big creature, preferably one that goes through the air. And he's playing a fireball on the Protocol Sorcerer. So he's protecting his Lanawar and playing another Lanawar Elf. So that's, uh, that's a good move. And then hitting me for one with the other Elf. I think this is a good move to pr protect your Lanowars. And I'm playing something for four. Oh, I'm playing a Control Magic. Interesting. And I'm taking over the Sarah Angel in passing turn. So this is good news here. For me, at least. And a nice thing about the Control Magic is that because the Sarah Angel doesn't tap, I'm getting an untapped creature. I've had multiple games where I've used the Control Magic and I got a tapped creature in return. And of course, it's nice to have that creature. But it's tapped, so you can't use it to block. And when you're in trouble, that can sometimes be uh, fatal for your position. Um, what do we see now? Thais is activating his Jailum again. He's getting a lot of value from that card. And he's playing an If Biff Afrit. And this is a 3 3 flyer. And it has the hurricane mechanic built in. So any player can pay one green mana. Obviously, I don't have any green mana. And then it deals one damage to everything in the air and every player. So now I'm attacking with my Sarah Angel. Curious to see what Thais is going to do. And, oh, this is interesting. So he's hurricaning for one, so using the FBIF, then blocking, and that's a way for him to kill the Angel. And I don't mind really, because now we've just traded flyers, which is fine. So he's losing two creatures. Uh, and I did that with just one control magic. That's how I look at it. And now he's attacking me with two elves. And what is he going to do? He's playing a regrowth. Ooh. Ah, and I've got a spell blast. That's good news for me. 
because that regrowth, he probably was going to get back his angel, and that would have been a problem for me. Drawing cards here, also having an ivory tower on the field, so that's going to give me some life. And I'm playing a pirate ship. So that's pretty cool. Pirate ship is one of those cards you want to play with it because it, the art is just so great, but it's just usually not good enough. But in my mono blue ping deck, it kind of works. And let's see what Thais can do because he's getting in trouble now. I have that active library. I have an ivory tower. Um, he doesn't have a big creature. I also have that mace still. I mean, it's not looking good. And there's the swords. And that means I'm getting four life from the pirate ship, taking one hit here, sending one elf back. And he's playing a disenchant over my tower. He's doing what he can do, but it looks like Thais is empty, he's out of threats, and I still have a pretty full hand here. I'm playing a Mahamoti Jin, 5-6 flyer. And he needs another piece of removal using his tome again. And like I said, I really like this card. I've, I've played with it as well in, in some of my decks, and it's really much better than you think. Because it allows you to just go through your deck much quicker. I don't know if I would have played the Lanawar Elf Perhaps I would have kept it in my hand for the JLO next turn. Um, but it wouldn't have helped much, I guess. Now I'm cloning the Mahamodi, so it means I have two 5-6 fly flyers. I just hit him for 5. He's down to 13, and I want 21 life. Things are looking pretty good. And here he shows me the Ice Storm. And it's, it's just too little, too late. He is taking so many activations from the Library of Alexandria. And of course, he, he chooses that one. But... The library has been very decisive in this matchup, like, like in, in a lot of matchups. And I think Thais wasn't very lucky um, because he didn't draw any land removal, despite the fact that he plays, I believe, with four Ice Storms in that deck. So that's just being unlucky here. And me being very lucky drawing that Library of Alexandria uh, in my second turn. Playing the big book, so now we have the small book and the big book. And of course, in late game, the big book is much better. The Jadam Tome. There we see the activation from Thais. And he's showing us his hand. There's nothing he can do, really. So game one, I win with the mono blue deck. Now we're going off to the sideboards. And we'll see what happens in game number two. So game number two here with Thais on the play. Having a good start with a Mox Ruby and a Savannah. Let's see what I can do. Playing an island, passing turn. Not much happening yet. If he plays a mox now, he can play like a spell blast. That would be cool. But he doesn't. He just plays a forest, playing a felwer stone. Again, giving Tyson an opening because I'm not able to counter. So maybe that's why he didn't do anything in that turn before. And there's an if biff a free. We've seen that one in the first match. So that's that. Hurricane on a stick. And I'm playing a control magic. I'm not sure if that's going to help because he can now kill his own if biff if he decides to tap three mana because of that hurricane effect. So it's not the best creature to steal here. Probably my train of thought is that, you know, it means I have no damage. Oh, this is interesting. He plays a spirit link over the if biff. That's a good move, making it completely useless for me. The only good thing about this is that I don't have it against me. Oh, and he has a Hurricane. And that way he can create life. So he can deal damage to me. And gain life himself. And I'm playing a Timmy here, Protocol Sorcerer. And he's doing that trick that I just talked about because of the Spirit Link on the FF. And I think I'm asking about it, how that actually works. But the end of the story is that he gains a life and he takes a life from me. So basically he is pinging me now. But his pinging is going a lot faster than my pinging because all he needs to do is tap one green mana and he has enough of that. 
playing a clone over my particle sorcerer. So that's not bad. And now I can start pinging, but that if if free is a problem. So I need another particle sorcerer in order to kill my own creature. So the creature that I stole. Quite interesting situation. He's playing a blue elemental blast, taking back his if if free, and now earning life in a more traditional sense. So hitting me for three, taking three, and this if biff has delivered him so much. And I haven't played a singer, single counterspell with this deck. Pinging him for two. And he's he's hurricaning away with his if biff of I think that card is just very dominant. I think that's pretty much the card of this game number two. I can't see how I can win this. Oh, this was interesting. Wait a minute. I didn't quite follow there. But because uh, Thais was pinging me for one with the hurricane, also damaging his own if biff, I could use my protocol sorcerers to kill his if biff free. So that's one threat off the table. But here's the second one, a force of nature. And although I've cloned all my Timmies, it is not going to save me from this huge force of nature. And this is this is a big problem because you cannot steal force of nature. Well, you can, but you have this huge upkeep cost that um, the forests that I can't pay. So that's going to be a damage if I would steal it. I cannot clone it because of the same reason. Well, I could and then maybe think Tice is going to attack and I can use it as a charm block or charm block but a trade. Um, but what I need now really is a maze of if. And Thais is getting 8 damage here from the force of nature because I used to strip mine on a forest. So he cannot pay the upkeep cost for uh, the force of nature. Interesting, he's playing a regrowth. I'm playing a counter spell, I'm countering the regrowth. So that means that Thais is still in trouble. However, he does have 22 lives still, and I only have 2 lives. So despite kind of having a pretty good board state here and forcing Thais to take a damage from his own force of nature. Um, you know, he's he's so far ahead with life. And now he's playing his spirit link over his force of nature. And those spirit links are really the end of me. I'm drawing a maze of if. That's pretty good for me here. So let's see what's going to happen next turn. Oh, I'm playing more even. I'm drawing a card with my book. And this is what I want to do with the blue deck, kind of control the match via counter spells and then slowly pinging my opponent to death. So Thais is getting 8 damage because he cannot pay the upkeep cost, but also gaining 8 life because of the spirit link. Interesting to know here is that you first get the damage and then you get the life. Oh, and this is, oh, this is the end of the game. There was the ice storm over the Mace of If. It went very quickly, but the Mace of If is gone. And we're talking a little bit about it, and I'm showing him I don't have a counter spell. I only had the counter threat with the two islands untapped. And I'm showing that control magic that was so decisive in the first game and so useless in this second game. So that means it's one all, and we are going to have a decisive game to see who wins this one. So let's go on to game number three. Game number three and I am on the play and I think it was really interesting to see how uh, Thais has sideboarded because I didn't see any Sarah Angels anymore and instead maybe he chose to play with some more Force of Natures knowing that I have those control magics and with the creatures that were on the board that last game you could really see that my control magics weren't really a great help. Oh, hello, this is a big problem for me. There is a circle of protection blue. And I actually, there's not much that I can do about this. The only thing that I can do is, is force Thais then to spend all his mana, I guess. But I have no enchantment removal in blue. I do not play with boomerang. There is nothing I can do, really. This is pretty horrible for me. And he's playing an if biff of Freeton. Oh, at least I can power sync this one. So that's good news. And I'm really thinking right now, like, how can I still win this game? How can I get anything out of this game with that Circle of Protection Blue there? You don't see the Circle of Protection Blue often, but it does it does the trick. And there's a regrowth. And I believe Thais has 
drown the regrowth every single game. And I cannot counter it or choose not to. Maybe I want to counter the threat that he's going to play out. I've only played one power sink so far and a lot of lands. And there's an ivory tower. So I just decide to lean back here and gain myself some life. But there is a quick disenchant. Again, no counter spell. And I think it's interesting that I haven't played more counter spells because in this particular deck I have four counter spells, three power sink, and three spell blast. So I have 10 counter spells in total. So all in all, I think over the whole three games, I've been kind of modest with the counter spells. And looking at that circle of protection, uh, Blue, it's really not making me happy. And here's a direct fireball. And I choose to spell blast the fireball. Okay, interesting. And maybe Thijs is doing this on purpose. Maybe he wants me to use up my counter spells on this fireball and maybe he's now playing a creature. I don't think it was a very good decision of me to counter that fireball. I'm still on 20. I can just take that damage. And there is another fireball. Interesting. And now I am taking the 5 damage. And I'm playing a Prodigal Sorcerer, so a Timmy. But hey, there's that Circle of Protection Blue which is kind of staring me into the face and telling me you are going nowhere. And there's another If Biff Afreet, and I still have a counter spell. So it's interesting how why I countered that first fireball and I didn't choose to counter the second one, uh, probably because I want to have at least one counter spell in the backup. And it's so decisive with my deck uh, to have a counter spell. And now basically all my protocol sorcerer um, all that my Protocol Sorcerer uh, can do is forcing uh, Thais to tap one mana with the Circle of Protection Blue every time I try to ping him. And I think that's exactly what I'm doing here. And I'm playing a clone over my Timmy. Just doing what I usually would do, kind of trying to ignore that Circle of Protection Blue. And of course... Uh, if Ty says any one drops, he cannot play them out anymore because of those Timmies on the field. I would kill them instantly because he cannot prevent that damage. Tapping six here. <laughs> Playing a force of nature. And luckily I have another counter spell. This was a very crucial counter spell. Pinging him again. So he's almost tapped out. So actually I can do him one damage now. Oh yeah, here I go. Pedal to the metal. And I play a pirate ship. So my pinger army is growing. But I don't think it's enough. Look at the amount of land that Thais has. And that circle of protection blue. This is just horrible. For me at least. For Thais it's great. He can just sit back. And he can wait. I still have three cards in hand. He's probably asking because of all those counter spells. I've countered a lot in this third game. And there's something for four mana. There's a fireball. And he's probably going to ping my two Timmies. Yes, he is. Oh, and this is disastrous. Kind of my tactic was to just create as many pingers as possible and force dice to tap out, trying to prevent that damage. And every once in a while, get some damage in. But these fireballs are killing me. And this was already his third fireball. So I wonder if he boarded in some fireballs and look at my hand there there was a Mahamodi Jin control magic and a Vesuvan double ganger so actually I could have um, used that Vesuvan to create another Timmy or a pirate ship and I like Wheel of Fortune I like Wheel of Fortune even discarding three good cards I still like it it's just a great feeling drawing seven new ones And just having a nice fresh hand. And it's it's not great for Thais as well because he's giving me a lot of counter spells. Remember, this Mono Blue deck is pretty much a counter deck with some pingers. So I can now counter again. But the biggest problem is already on the board in the form of that Circle of Protection Blue. And that's already there, so I cannot counter it. And maybe this kind of shows why, for instance, Boomerang is such a great card. Because then I could have Boomeranged it back to his hand, keeping a counter spell to counter it when he would cast it again. But that's not a scenario that I can hope for because I don't play with Boomerang in this deck. And there's a Swords over my pirate ship, and I'm taking it. 
And there is finally he can play Alana Ralphs. Hasn't been able to play it for most of the game because of those Timmies and pirate ships. Ooh, nice. It's always nice to see a Chaos Orb. Oh, I'm spell blasting the Chaos Orb. Interesting choice here because they only have islands. So what can he target? Maybe I have something in my hand that I want to play out. Okay, there's a mace. Okay, fair enough. Not sure if this was a good decision to spell blast the Chaos Orb because there were no targets. And there's the little book, the Jaloom Tome. Again, it's it's a good card, but obviously mid-game, late game, especially in this board setup, you really just want the big book to just draw the cards. You don't want the Jaloom Tome, you want the Jadum Tome. And <laughs> I'm showing my hand. I'm kind of... Uh, Frustrated, I'm showing him, and, and I think this is the game I'm, I'm giving up. There's no way for me to really uh, win from that circle of protection uh, blue, and that's the game. So Thijs has, has won that decisive game and the match because of that circle of protection blue. Well done. Thank you for watching Timmy Talks. If you would like to watch more old school magic, please click on the uh, link that's appearing right now and you can see me play way more games with different decks for now thank you for watching this episode of timmy talks the channel where we talk old school magic and see you next time <laughs>